My parents secretly used my credit card to book a $20,000 trip to Europe for my sister Golden Child, so I reported it to the police as fraud, which led to a lot of family drama that made me not contact them anymore. Growing up, I always knew that my sister Emily was the favorite. She was the Golden Child, the one who could do no wrong in my parents' eyes. Meanwhile, I was the one who had to fight for every bit of recognition and approval. It was a dynamic that had defined our family for as long as I could remember, and I had learned to live with it. But nothing could have prepared me for what I discovered that fateful day. It started innocently enough. I was checking my credit card statement online, a routine task I did every month to ensure everything was in order. As I scrolled through the list of transactions, something caught my eye. A $20,000 charge from a luxury travel agency. My heart skipped a beat and I stared at the screen in disbelief. There had to be some mistake. I immediately called the credit card company, hoping for an explanation that would make sense. After a few minutes of navigating through the automated system, I finally reached a customer service representative. Thank you for calling XYZ Credit Card Services. How can I assist you today? The friendly voice on the other end said. Hi, I just noticed a $20,000 charge on my statement from a travel agency. I didn't make this purchase and I'm really worried about fraud. I explained, my voice shaky. Let me pull up your account, the representative said. After a few moments, she continued, I see the charge here. It's for a luxury trip to Europe booked under your name. Are you sure you didn't authorize this transaction? I'm positive, I replied. I don't have any plans to travel, and I definitely wouldn't spend that kind of money without knowing about it. Okay, we can initiate a fraud investigation and temporarily freeze your account. You'll need to provide some additional information and well investigate this charge further, she said. I followed her instructions, filling out the necessary forms and providing all the information I could. As I hung up the phone, a sense of dread washed over me. Who could have done this? My mind raced through possibilities, but I couldn't think of anyone who would have access to my credit card information. Later that evening, I received a text from my mom asking me to come over for dinner Still reeling from the shock of the unauthorized charge, I decided to go. Maybe a family dinner would provide some much-needed distraction. When I arrived at my parents' house, the smell of my mom's famous lasagna greeted me. Emily was already there, lounging on the couch and scrolling through her phone. My parents were in the kitchen, putting the finishing touches on dinner. Hey, everyone, I greeted them, trying to sound normal despite the turmoil inside me. Hi, sweetie. Dinner's almost ready my mom said with a warm smile. My dad nodded in acknowledgement, and Emily barely glanced up from her phone. As we sat down to eat, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I decided to bring up the credit card issue, hoping my parents might have some advice. So I discovered something really strange today, I began, trying to sound casual. There was a $20,000 charge on my credit card from a travel agency. I didn't authorize it, and I had to report it as fraud. My parents exchanged a quick glance, and Emily suddenly seemed very interested in her food. I noticed a flicker of guilt in my mom's eyes, and my dad shifted uncomfortably in his seat. That's quite a lot of money, my dad said slowly. Are you sure it wasn't a mistake? I'm sure, I replied, watching their reactions closely. I talked to the credit card company, and they confirmed it was for a luxury trip to Europe. They're investigating it now. There was a tense silence, and I could feel the weight of their discomfort. My mom finally spoke, her voice hesitant. We, we meant to tell you. We used your credit card to book a trip for Emily. It was supposed to be a surprise. I felt like the ground had been pulled out from under me. You did what? I asked, my voice rising in disbelief. You used my credit card without telling me? That's fraud. My mom's eyes filled with tears, and she reached out to touch my hand. We didn't mean to hurt you. Emily has been through so much, and we wanted to do something special for her. I pulled my hand away, anger boiling inside me. That's not the point, Mom. You can't just take $20,000 from me without asking. This is a huge betrayal. Emily finally spoke up, her voice defensive. I didn't ask them to do it. They just wanted to do something nice for me. I turned to her, my anger now directed at the whole family. That doesn't make it okay, Emily. This is my credit card, my money. You should have known better. My dad stood up trying to defuse the situation. Let's all calm down. We can figure this out. But I couldn't calm down. The betrayal cut too deep. There's nothing to figure out. You stole from me. This is fraud, plain and simple. I left their house that night, my mind in a whirlwind of emotions. 
I couldn't believe my own parents would do something like this. As I drove home, I realized I had no choice but to follow through with the fraud investigation. They had crossed a line, and there was no going back. The next few days were a blur of phone calls and paperwork. I provided the credit card company with all the information they needed, and the police got involved as well. It was a surreal experience, reporting my own parents for fraud. But I knew it was the right thing to do. The fallout was immediate and intense. My parents were furious, accusing me of overreacting and tearing the family apart. Emily was caught in the middle, her guilt and embarrassment evident. The extended family got wind of the situation, and the gossip spread like wildfire. I found myself isolated, with only a few close friends to lean on. The stress took a toll on me, both physically and emotionally. But I knew I had to stay strong. This was about more than just the money. It was about standing up for myself and setting boundaries. The investigation dragged on, and the family drama continued to escalate. My parents tried to guilt trip me into dropping the charges, but I stood firm. I knew that if I backed down now, it would only reinforce their belief that they could get away with anything. One evening, as I sat in my apartment, exhausted from the day's events, I received a call from my mom. Her voice was filled with desperation. Please, let's just talk. We can work this out. I sighed, feeling a pang of sadness. Mom, there's nothing to talk about. You crossed a line, and I can't just ignore that. But we're family, she pleaded. We can get through this together. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my emotions in check. I need some space. I need to figure out how to move forward from this. As I hung up the phone, I realized that my relationship with my parents might never be the same. The trust had been shattered, and it would take a long time to rebuild it, if that was even possible. But I also knew that I had to prioritize my own well-being and protect myself from further harm. The journey ahead was uncertain, but I was determined to find a way to heal and move forward. It was time to start a new chapter, one where I could stand up for myself and set boundaries without fear of betrayal. And for the first time in a long while, I felt a glimmer of hope that I could create a life where I was in control of my own destiny. The days following the discovery of the unauthorized charges were a blur of anxiety and disbelief. I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that my own parents had used my credit card to book an extravagant trip for Emily. It was an unforgivable breach of trust, and I knew I couldn't let it slide. I decided to confront them directly, hoping against hope that there was some kind of misunderstanding. Maybe they had meant to ask me and forgot, or maybe there was some other explanation, but deep down, I knew the truth. I called my mom and asked if we could meet. She sounded hesitant but agreed. We decided to meet at a quiet cafe in town, a neutral ground where we could talk without the heightened emotions that came with being at home. When I arrived, my mom was already there, nursing a cup of coffee and looking anxious. I sat down across from her, my heart pounding in my chest. This was not going to be easy. Mom, we need to talk about the charges on my credit card, I began, trying to keep my voice steady. I need to understand why you and Dad thought it was okay to use my card without asking. She sighed, looking down at her coffee. I know it looks bad, but we didn't think it would be a big deal. We planned to pay you back. It was just a surprise for Emily. I felt a surge of anger. Not a big deal? Mom, you took $20,000 from me without asking. That's a huge deal. Do you even realize what kind of position you put me in? She looked up, her eyes filled with tears. We never meant to hurt you. We just wanted to do something special for your sister. She's been going through a tough time. I clenched my fists, trying to control my frustration. And what about me? Don't I matter? You didn't even think to ask if I could afford to lose that kind of money. You just assumed it would be fine because it was for Emily. We were going to pay you back, she repeated weakly. But even she didn't seem convinced by her own words. I shook my head. That's not the point. The point is, you betrayed my trust. You stole from me. And now, because of your actions, I've had to report it as fraud. The police are involved, and this is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. My mom's face went pale. The police? Oh, honey, no, this is a family matter. We can handle it ourselves. I didn't have a choice, I replied, my voice firm. You left me with no choice. I had to protect myself. At that moment, my dad walked into the cafe. He must have been waiting nearby, ready to join the conversation. He looked tense and angry as he sat down next to my mom. What's going on? He demanded, his voice harsh. Why did you report us to the police? I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the confrontation. You used my credit card without permission, Dad. That's fraud. I had to report it. His face turned red with anger. 
This is ridiculous. We're your parents. We were going to pay you back. You're overreacting. I'm not overreacting, I shot back. You stole from me. How can you not see how wrong that is? My dad's eyes flashed with anger. You're being selfish. We did this for Emily. She's been struggling, and we wanted to do something nice for her. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Selfish? You think I'm being selfish for wanting to protect myself? For wanting to be treated with respect? We raised you, he said, his voice rising. We've done everything for you, and this is how you repay us? By dragging us through a police investigation? My mom reached out to touch his arm, trying to calm him down. Please, let's just talk this through. We can work it out. But I had had enough. I stood up, my hands shaking. There's nothing to work out. You crossed a line and there are consequences. I need time to think about how to move forward from this, but right now I can't deal with this betrayal. I turned and walked out of the cafe, my heart pounding in my chest. The confrontation had gone exactly as I had feared. My parents were in denial, refusing to see the gravity of what they had done. They saw themselves as the victims, unable to comprehend the depth of my hurt and anger. As I drove home, I felt a mixture of sadness and resolve. My parents might never understand the impact of their actions, but I couldn't let that stop me from standing up for myself. I had done the right thing by reporting the fraud, even if it meant causing a rift in the family. The following days were filled with more phone calls and paperwork. The police investigation was in full swing, and I had to provide statements and evidence. It was a draining process, but I knew it was necessary. I couldn't let my parents get away with what they had done. The fallout was immediate and intense. My parents were furious, and they made it clear that they saw me as the villain. They tried to guilt trip me, calling me ungrateful and selfish, but I stood firm, knowing that I had to protect myself. Emily, caught in the middle, was awkward and distant. She didn't know how to handle the situation, and I couldn't blame her. This was a mess of our parents' making, and we were all suffering the consequences. My extended family got wind of the situation, and the gossip spread like wildfire. Some relatives reached out to offer support, while others criticized me for taking such drastic measures. It was a lonely and isolating time, but I knew I had to stay strong. Through it all, my friends were my rock. They listened to my frustrations, offered advice, and reassured me that I was doing the right thing. Mark was especially supportive, always ready with a comforting word or a hug when I needed it most. One evening as I was sitting in my apartment, exhausted from the day's events, Mark came over with takeout and a bottle of wine. We sat on the couch, eating and talking about everything but the family drama. It was a much-needed distraction, and I felt a glimmer of hope for the first time in days. You're doing the right thing, Mark said, his voice gentle but firm. Your parents need to understand that what they did was wrong. You're standing up for yourself, and that takes a lot of courage. Thank you, I said, my voice choked with emotion. It's just so hard. I never wanted to be in this position. I know he replied, squeezing my hand. But you're strong, and you'll get through this. We'll get through this together. His words gave me the strength to keep going. The road ahead was uncertain, but I knew I had to stay true to myself. My parents' betrayal had been a harsh wake-up call, but it had also shown me the importance of standing up for my own well-being. As the investigation continued and the family drama escalated, I held on to that resolve. I didn't know what the future held, but I was determined to face it head-on. It was time to take control of my own destiny, no matter the cost. The confrontation with my parents had left me emotionally drained and more determined than ever to protect myself. Their blatant denial and refusal to accept responsibility only solidified my decision to report the unauthorized charges as fraud. It wasn't just about the money anymore. It was about standing up for my rights and setting boundaries that my parents had crossed. The following day, I sat at my kitchen table, surrounded by paperwork from the credit card company and the police department. Mark was there with me, offering his support and helping me sort through everything. He had always been my rock, and his presence gave me the strength I needed to follow through with my decision. This isn't going to be easy, Mark said, his voice gentle but firm. But you're doing the right thing. Your parents need to understand the consequences of their actions. I know, I replied, taking a deep breath. It just feels so surreal. I never thought I'd be in this position, reporting my own parents for fraud. Mark squeezed my hand. You're not alone in this. We'll get through it together. I nodded, feeling a surge of gratitude for his unwavering support. 
With his encouragement, I completed the necessary forms and provided all the required information to the credit card company and the police. It was a tedious and emotionally taxing process, but I knew it was necessary. The days that followed were filled with a mixture of anxiety and resolve. I tried to focus on my work and daily routines, but the looming investigation was always in the back of my mind. The tension with my parents remained, and I found it increasingly difficult to concentrate on anything else. One evening, I decided to confide in Sarah, my best friend since childhood. She had always been there for me through thick and thin, and I knew she would understand. We met at our favorite coffee shop, a cozy little place with warm lighting and comfortable chairs. As we sat down with our drinks, Sarah immediately sensed that something was wrong. What's going on? She asked, her eyes filled with concern. You look like you've been through the ringer. I sighed, feeling the weight of the past few days settle on my shoulders. It's my parents. They used my credit card to book a $20,000 trip for Emily without telling me. I had to report it as fraud. Sarah's eyes widened in shock. Are you serious? That's insane. How could they do that? I don't know. I replied, my voice trembling. They said it was supposed to be a surprise for Emily, but they didn't even think to ask me. And now they're angry at me for reporting it. Sarah shook her head, disbelief written all over her face. That's unbelievable. You did the right thing by reporting it. They can't just take your money like that. I know, I said, feeling a lump form in my throat, but it's tearing the family apart. They're trying to guilt trip me into dropping the charges, but I can't let them get away with it. Sarah reached across the table and squeezed my hand. You're doing the right thing. They need to understand that their actions have consequences. And you need to stand up for yourself, even if it's hard. Thanks, Sarah, I said, my voice choked with emotion. I just feel so alone in this. You're not alone, she replied firmly. You've got me, Mark, and other people who care about you. We'll get through this together. Her words gave me a renewed sense of resolve. I knew I had to stay strong and follow through with the investigation, no matter how difficult it was. My parents' betrayal had cut deep, but I couldn't let that stop me from doing what was right. As the days turned into weeks, the investigation progressed. The police contacted me regularly for updates and additional information, and I cooperated fully. My parents, on the other hand, were growing increasingly desperate. They tried to reach out to me, leaving messages that ranged from pleading to accusatory. One evening, I received a call from my mom. Her voice was shaky, filled with desperation. Please, let's just talk. We can work this out as a family. I took a deep breath, trying to keep my emotions in check. Mom, I've already told you, there's nothing to talk about. You and Dad crossed a line and there are consequences. I can't just let this go. We were going to pay you back, she insisted. You didn't have to involve the police. You should have thought about that before you used my credit card without asking, I replied, my voice firm. This isn't just about the money. It's about trust and respect, and you violated both. There was a long silence on the other end of the line. Finally, my mom spoke, her voice barely above a whisper. We never meant to hurt you. We just wanted to do something special for Emily. I understand that, I said, feeling a pang of sadness. But you can't just take what isn't yours. You have to face the consequences of your actions. As I hung up the phone, I felt a mixture of sadness and resolve, my parents might never understand the gravity of what they had done, but I couldn't let that stop me from standing up for myself. I had to protect my own well-being, even if it meant facing the fallout from my family. The investigation continued, and the family drama escalated. My parents were furious, and they made it clear that they saw me as the villain. They tried to guilt-trip me, calling me ungrateful and selfish, but I stood firm, knowing that I had to protect myself. Emily, caught in the middle, was awkward and distant. She didn't know how to handle the situation, and I couldn't blame her. This was a mess of our parents' making, and we were all suffering the consequences. One afternoon, as I was working from home, I received a call from the police officer handling my case. We've completed our investigation, and we're ready to move forward with pressing charges against your parents, he said. I felt a mixture of relief and anxiety. Thank you, I replied. I know this isn't easy, but it's necessary. We'll keep you updated on the next steps, the officer said. And if you need any support or resources, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, I repeated, my voice filled with gratitude. I appreciate everything you've done. As I hung up the phone, I felt a sense of finality. The investigation was moving forward and there was no turning back.
My parents would have to face the consequences of their actions, and I had to find a way to navigate the fallout. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of legal proceedings and family drama. My parents were furious, accusing me of tearing the family apart. Emily remained distant, unable to reconcile her loyalty to our parents with the reality of what they had done. Through it all, I held on to my resolve. I knew I had done the right thing, even if it meant facing the wrath of my family. I had to stand up for myself and protect my own well-being, no matter the cost. One evening as I sat in my apartment, reflecting on everything that had happened, Mark came over with a bottle of wine and a comforting smile. We sat on the couch, talking about the future and finding solace in each other's company. You've been so strong through all of this, Mark said, his voice filled with admiration. I'm proud of you. Thank you, I replied, my voice choked with emotion. It hasn't been easy, but I know it's the right thing to do. We'll get through this together, he said, wrapping his arms around me, one step at a time. As I leaned into his embrace, I felt a sense of peace. The journey ahead was uncertain, but I knew I wasn't alone. With the support of my friends and loved ones, I could face whatever challenges lay ahead. It was time to embrace the future, to create a life where I was in control of my own destiny. The road ahead would be difficult, but I was ready to face it head on with courage and determination. The decision to report my parents for fraud was one of the hardest things I'd ever done, but it was necessary. I knew I had to protect myself and stand up for my rights, even if it meant facing the fallout from my family. As the investigation progressed, I braced myself for the next step, filing the official police report. Mark accompanied me to the police station for moral support. We walked into the station, the sterile smell of disinfectant filling the air, the fluorescent lights cast a harsh glow, making everything seem more daunting. I felt a knot of anxiety in my stomach, but Mark's presence was a steadying force. The officer handling my case, Detective Ramirez, greeted us with a professional but sympathetic demeanor. Thank you for coming in today, she said, leading us to a small conference room. We need to get a detailed statement from you and complete the official report. I nodded, taking a deep breath. I'm ready, I said, trying to sound more confident than I felt. Detective Ramirez began by asking me to recount the events leading up to the discovery of the unauthorized charges. I explained how I had found the $20,000 charge from the travel agency on my credit card statement and my subsequent conversation with the credit card company. As I spoke, I felt a mix of emotions, anger, betrayal, and sadness. It was surreal to be in this position, reporting my own parents for fraud, but I knew it was the right thing to do. Detective Ramirez listened intently, taking notes and asking clarifying questions. You mentioned that your parents admitted to using your credit card for the trip, she said. Can you provide more details about that conversation? I recounted the confrontation at the cafe, describing how my parents had tried to justify their actions by saying it was a surprise for Emily and that they intended to pay me back. Detective Ramirez nodded, her expression serious. Thank you for providing this information, she said. We'll need you to sign a formal statement, and then we'll proceed with the charges. As I signed the statement, my hand trembled slightly. This was it, the point of no return. I glanced at Mark, who gave me a reassuring nod. You're doing the right thing, he mouthed silently. After completing the paperwork, Detective Ramirez explained the next steps. We'll notify your parents and proceed with the legal process. There may be court appearances and other legal proceedings. We'll keep you informed throughout the process. Thank you, I said, my voice steady but filled with emotion. I appreciate everything you're doing. As we left the police station, I felt a mixture of relief and apprehension. The official report had been filed and there was no turning back. I knew the road ahead would be difficult, but I was determined to see it through. The following days were filled with tension and uncertainty. My parents were furious when they received the notification from the police. They called and texted incessantly, demanding that I drop the charges. Each message was a mix of anger, guilt tripping, and pleas for forgiveness. You're tearing this family apart, my dad's message read. We never meant to hurt you. Can't you just let this go? Please, we're begging you, my mom's voice quivered in a voicemail. We're your parents. We made a mistake, but we don't deserve this. I couldn't bring myself to respond. Their refusal to acknowledge the severity of their actions only reinforced my decision. I needed to stand firm and let the legal process take its course. Emily, caught in the middle, remained distant, 
She avoided direct confrontation but made it clear through her silence that she was siding with our parents. It hurt to see my sister, who had once been my confidant, now acting as if I was the enemy. The extended family was also divided. Some relatives reached out to offer their support, understanding the gravity of the situation. Others criticized me for taking such drastic measures, accusing me of overreacting and causing unnecessary drama. You need to think about the family, my Aunt Linda said during one particularly heated phone call. We all make mistakes. This could have been handled privately. This isn't just a mistake, I replied, my voice trembling with frustration. They stole from me. It's not something I can just brush under the rug. My circle of support narrowed to a few close friends and Mark, who remained steadfast by my side. Their unwavering belief in me gave me the strength to keep going, even when the pressure from my family felt overwhelming. One evening, Sarah came over to my apartment with a bottle of wine and a sympathetic ear. We sat on the couch talking about everything but the family drama at first, trying to find some semblance of normalcy. After a while, the conversation inevitably turned to the ongoing situation. How are you holding up? Sarah asked, her eyes filled with concern. It's been tough, I admitted, taking a sip of wine. The pressure from my parents and the family is relentless, but I know I have to see this through. Sarah nodded, her expression serious. You're doing the right thing, even if it's hard. Your parents need to understand that their actions have consequences, and you need to protect yourself. Thank you, I said, feeling a lump form in my throat. It's just hard to be seen as the villain by my own family. You're not the villain, she replied firmly. You're standing up for yourself and doing what's right. Don't let anyone make you feel otherwise. Her words were a balm to my wounded spirit. I knew she was right but the emotional toll of the situation was wearing me down. I had to find a way to navigate the family drama while staying true to my principles. The legal proceedings moved forward, and my parents faced the reality of their actions. They were charged with fraud, and the court process began. It was a surreal experience seeing my parents in a courtroom, but I knew it was necessary. Through it all, I held on to the support of my friends and Mark. They were my anchor, helping me stay grounded and focused. The journey was far from over, but I was determined to see it through to the end. One evening, as Mark and I sat on the couch, he turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Have you thought about taking some time for yourself? Maybe a trip or a break from all of this? The idea was tempting. A chance to escape the stress and recharge sounded like exactly what I needed. I've thought about it, I admitted. But I don't want to run away from the situation. It's not running away, Mark said gently. It's taking care of yourself. You've been through a lot, and you deserve a break. I nodded, considering his words. Maybe you're right. A little time away might help me gain some perspective. With Mark's encouragement, I decided to plan a short trip. It was a small step towards self-care, a way to reclaim some control over my life amidst the chaos. I booked a cozy cabin in the mountains, a place where I could disconnect and find some peace. As I packed my bags and prepared for the trip, I felt a sense of anticipation. It was a chance to reset, to focus on my own well-being, and to gain clarity on how to move forward. The drive to the cabin was peaceful, the scenery gradually shifting from bustling city to serene wilderness. When I arrived, I was greeted by the sight of a quaint cabin nestled among the trees, with a breathtaking view of the mountains. The days that followed were filled with quiet reflection. I hiked through the trails, breathed in the fresh mountain air, and allowed myself to disconnect from the constant barrage of family drama. It was a time to heal, to find strength within myself, and to remember that I was doing the right thing. As I sat on the porch one evening watching the sun set over the mountains, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. The journey had been difficult, and there were still challenges ahead, but I knew I was on the right path. I returned home feeling rejuvenated and more resolved than ever. The family drama was still there, but I was better equipped to handle it. I had gained perspective and found strength within myself to face whatever came next. The legal process continued, and my parents faced the consequences of their actions. It was a long and arduous journey, but I remained steadfast. With the support of my friends, Mark, and my newfound sense of inner strength, I knew I could navigate the challenges ahead. In the end, it wasn't just about the money or the legal battle. It was about standing up for myself, setting boundaries, and reclaiming control over my life. The journey was far from over, but I was ready to face it head-on with courage and determination. The police investigation into my parents' fraudulent use of my credit card was a turning point that rippled through every aspect of my life. 
the days felt heavier as the reality of the situation settled in. The legal machinery was grinding forward, and I could feel the pressure mounting from all sides. Yet, I knew this was a necessary step. Detective Ramirez, who was handling my case, kept me updated on the progress. Each update was a mix of relief and dread. Relief that justice was moving forward, and dread over the increasing tension with my family. One morning I received a call from Detective Ramirez. We've made significant progress in the investigation, she said. We've gathered enough evidence to press charges, and we'll be issuing a formal notice to your parents soon. Thank you for the update, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. What happens next? They'll receive a court summons and will have to appear before a judge. We'll need you to be present as well to provide your testimony. The gravity of her words sank in. I understand. I'll be there. After hanging up, I sat in silence, absorbing the weight of the situation. It was a bittersweet moment, vindication mixed with the pain of knowing my parents would face legal consequences. Despite the complexity of emotions, I knew this was the right path. As expected, my parents reacted explosively when they received the court summons. They called me immediately, their voices a mixture of anger, desperation, and disbelief. How could you do this to us? My mom's voice crackled through the phone. We're your parents. This is tearing the family apart. I took a deep breath, trying to stay calm. Mom, I didn't do this. You did by taking my credit card without permission. This is the consequence of your actions. My dad's voice came next harsh and accusatory. You're ruining our lives. Do you really think this is the right way to handle things? We're your family. I'm sorry you feel that way, I replied, my voice steady. But I need to protect myself and my future. You crossed a line, and there are consequences. The conversation ended with my parents' anger still simmering, and I felt a mix of sadness and resolve. I couldn't let their manipulation deter me from doing what was right, in the midst of the turmoil, I reached out to the few family members who had shown me support. Aunt Karen, my mom's sister, had been a beacon of understanding throughout the ordeal. We arranged to meet for lunch, and I hoped her perspective might provide some comfort. When we met at a cozy cafe, Aunt Karen greeted me with a warm hug. How are you holding up, sweetheart? She asked, her eyes filled with concern. It's been tough, I admitted. The investigation is progressing, but the pressure from mom and dad is relentless. They don't seem to understand the gravity of what they did. Aunt Karen sighed, shaking her head. Your parents have always had a blind spot when it comes to Emily. They've made excuses for her and themselves for too long. It's about time someone held them accountable. I just wish it didn't have to come to this, I said, my voice tinged with sadness. I never wanted to be in this position. I know, Aunt Karen said gently but you're doing the right thing. Standing up for yourself is never easy, especially when it means going against your own family, but it's necessary. Her words were a balm to my wounded spirit. We spent the rest of the lunch talking about lighter topics, and I felt a sense of normalcy return, if only for a moment. Aunt Karen's support was invaluable, and it reminded me that I wasn't completely alone in this fight. The days leading up to the court appearance were a whirlwind of preparation and anxiety. I reviewed my statement with Detective Ramirez, ensuring that every detail was accurate. Mark was by my side through it all, his unwavering support giving me the strength to face what was ahead. The day of the court appearance arrived, and I felt a mixture of dread and determination as I walked into the courtroom. My parents were already there, their expressions a mix of anger and sadness. Emily sat beside them, her face unreadable. I took my place on the witness stand, my heart pounding, the judge, a stern-looking woman with an air of authority, called the court to order. As the proceedings began, I felt a wave of emotions, fear, anger, and a deep sense of betrayal. But I also felt a fierce determination to see this through. Detective Ramirez presented the evidence, detailing the unauthorized charges and my parents' admission of using my credit card without permission. The defense attorney tried to downplay the severity, arguing that it was a family matter that should be resolved privately. When it was my turn to testify, I took a deep breath and steadied myself. Your Honor, I began, my voice trembling slightly. This isn't just about the money, it's about trust and respect. My parents violated that trust by using my credit card without asking. I had no choice but to report it as fraud. As I spoke, I saw my parents' faces, a mix of guilt and defiance. Emily looked down, avoiding my gaze. It hurt to see them like this, but I knew I had to stand firm. 
The judge listened intently, her expression serious. When I finished, she turned to my parents. The charges against you are serious. Unauthorized use of a credit card is a criminal offense regardless of family relationships. The court will deliberate and issue a verdict. The tension in the courtroom was palpable as the judge announced a brief recess. I stepped outside, my mind racing. Mark was there, his presence a comforting anchor. You did great, he said, wrapping his arm around me. Whatever happens next, we'll face it together. When the court reconvened, the judge delivered her verdict. My parents were found guilty of unauthorized use of a credit card and were sentenced to community service in order to repay the $20,000. It was a fair outcome, but it felt bittersweet. The legal process had brought some measure of justice, but the emotional wounds would take much longer to heal. As we left the courtroom, my parents avoided eye contact, their anger still simmering. Emily approached me, her expression conflicted. I'm sorry it had to come to this, she said quietly. I didn't know what to do. I know, I replied, my voice soft. But you need to understand that what they did was wrong. I had to protect myself. Emily nodded, her eyes filled with tears. I get it. I just wish things could go back to the way they were. So do I, I said, feeling a pang of sadness. But we have to move forward from here. The aftermath of the court case was a period of adjustment. My parents began their community service, and the repayment process started. It was a long road, but I hoped it would be a wake-up call for them, a chance to reflect on their actions and the impact they had on me. The family drama continued to simmer, with some relatives still critical of my decision. But I held on to the support of my friends, Mark, and the few family members who understood. Their belief in me gave me the strength to keep going, even when the pressure felt overwhelming. One evening, as Mark and I sat on the couch, he turned to me with a thoughtful expression. You've been incredibly strong through all of this, he said. I'm proud of you. Thank you, I replied, feeling a lump form in my throat. It's been one of the hardest things I've ever done, but I know it was the right thing. We'll get through this, he said, wrapping his arm around me, one step at a time. As I leaned into his embrace, I felt a sense of peace. The journey was far from over, but I knew I had the strength and support to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The investigation had been a turning point, a necessary step towards reclaiming my life and setting boundaries. The road ahead would be difficult, but I was ready to face it with courage and determination. With the support of my loved ones and a newfound sense of inner strength, I knew I could navigate the challenges and emerge stronger on the other side. The court's verdict marked a significant step in my journey, but it also ignited a firestorm within my family. The backlash was immediate and intense, with emotions running high and old wounds being reopened. I had expected some fallout, but nothing could have prepared me for the full extent of the family drama that unfolded. In the days following the court appearance, the phone calls and messages from my parents grew more desperate and accusatory. They still refused to accept responsibility for their actions, and instead, they turned their anger towards me. You've humiliated us, my dad's voice crackled through the phone. How could you do this to your own parents? I clenched the phone tightly, trying to keep my voice steady. Dad, I didn't do this. You did by using my credit card without permission. You need to take responsibility for your actions. Responsibility, he scoffed. We were trying to do something nice for your sister. You've blown this way out of proportion. I sighed, feeling the familiar frustration bubble up inside me. This isn't about Emily. It's about you taking something that wasn't yours and expecting there to be no consequences. I had to protect myself. My mom's voice came next, softer but filled with a mix of guilt and anger. We're family, and families don't do this to each other. You should have handled this privately, not dragged us through the courts. I tried to talk to you, I replied, my voice firm. But you didn't listen. You left me with no choice. The conversation ended in another stalemate, with neither side willing to budge. I hung up the phone, feeling a mix of sadness and resolve. I couldn't let their attempts to guilt trip me undermine my decision. I had to stand firm. The extended family was no less divided. Some relatives reached out to offer their support, understanding the gravity of the situation. Aunt Karen remained a steadfast ally, her encouragement a constant source of strength. But others were not so understanding. My Aunt Linda, who had always been close to my parents, was particularly vocal in her criticism. This is a family matter, she said during a heated phone call. You should have kept it within the family instead of involving the police. 
You're tearing us apart. I didn't tear us apart, I replied, my voice trembling with frustration. Mom and Dad did when they used my credit card without asking. This isn't something I could just ignore. You're being stubborn, she retorted. Sometimes you have to put family first and let things go. I can't just let it go, I said, my voice steadying. I have to protect myself. They need to understand that what they did was wrong. Aunt Linda's words stung, but I knew I couldn't let them sway me. I had to stay true to my principles, even if it meant facing criticism from those who didn't understand. Emily, caught in the middle, remained distant. She avoided direct confrontation, but made it clear through her silence that she was struggling to reconcile her loyalty to our parents with the reality of what they had done. It hurt to see her so conflicted, but I hoped that in time, she would come to understand my perspective. One afternoon, I received an unexpected visit from my cousin Lisa, who had always been more like a sister to me. We met at a park, and as we walked along the winding paths, she listened to my side of the story. I can't believe this is happening, Lisa said, shaking her head. It's like a bad dream. I know, I replied, my voice heavy with emotion, but I had to do it. I couldn't let them get away with it. I get it, she said, her voice filled with sympathy. But it's hard for everyone to see it that way. Family loyalty runs deep, and this is shaking everyone to their core. I just wish they could see that I'm not the villain here, I said, feeling a lump form in my throat. I'm just trying to stand up for myself. They'll come around, Lisa said, squeezing my hand. It might take time, but they'll see the truth eventually. Her words gave me a glimmer of hope. I knew it would be a long and difficult road, but I had to believe that time and perspective would help heal the rifts that had formed. As the weeks passed, the family backlash continued to simmer, but I remained resolute. With the support of Mark, Sarah, Aunt Karen, and a few other close friends, I navigated the stormy waters of family drama. One evening, Mark and I decided to host a small gathering at our apartment. It was a chance to surround ourselves with supportive friends and family members, to find some joy amidst the chaos. Sarah and Aunt Karen arrived first, their presence a comforting reminder that I wasn't alone in this fight. Lisa came next, bringing a bottle of wine and her characteristic warmth. As the evening progressed, the apartment filled with laughter and conversation, a welcome respite from the tension. At one point, I found myself standing on the balcony with Lisa, looking out at the city lights. Thank you for being here, I said, my voice filled with gratitude. It means a lot. Of course, she replied, her eyes soft with understanding. We're family and family supports each other, even when things get tough. As the night drew to a close, I felt a renewed sense of strength and determination. The road ahead would be challenging, but I knew I could face it with the support of those who believed in me. The family drama was far from over, but I had found a way to navigate it with grace and resilience. I had learned to set boundaries, to stand up for myself, and to lean on those who truly cared about me. One morning as I sat with Mark, enjoying a quiet breakfast, he turned to me with a thoughtful expression. You've been incredibly strong through all of this, he said. I'm proud of you. Thank you, I replied, feeling a lump form in my throat. It hasn't been easy, but I know it's the right thing. We'll get through this together, he said, taking my hand, one step at a time. As I looked into his eyes, I felt a sense of peace. The journey was far from over, but I knew I had the strength and support to face whatever challenges lay ahead. With the love of my friends and family, I could navigate the stormy seas of family drama and emerge stronger on the other side. The legal ramifications of my parents' actions continued to ripple through our lives, casting a shadow over every family interaction. Despite the tension and ongoing backlash, I was determined to see this through. The court had ruled in my favor, but the emotional toll was immense. As my parents began their community service and repayment process, the reality of their actions began to sink in for everyone. They could no longer deny the severity of what they had done, but that didn't mean they accepted it gracefully. The anger and resentment simmered beneath the surface, making every family gathering a potential powder keg. One weekend, my parents called a family meeting at their house. They insisted that we needed to talk, to try and find a way to move forward. Reluctantly, I agreed, hoping that maybe this time we could reach some sort of understanding. When I arrived, the atmosphere was tense. My parents sat on the couch, their expressions a mix of anger and exhaustion. Emily was there too, looking uncomfortable and distant. I took a seat opposite them, bracing myself for whatever was to come. 
We need to talk about this, my mom began, her voice strained. This situation is tearing our family apart. We have to find a way to move past it. I agree, I said cautiously. But we can't move past it until you both acknowledge what you did and take responsibility for your actions. My dad's eyes flashed with anger. We've already been through the courts. We're doing community service and paying you back. What more do you want? I want you to understand the impact of your actions, I replied, my voice steady. This isn't just about the money. It's about trust and respect. You violated that trust, and it's going to take time to rebuild it. My mom's eyes filled with tears. We never meant to hurt you. We were trying to do something special for Emily. I understand that, I said, feeling a pang of sadness. But you can't use that as an excuse to justify what you did. You took my credit card without asking. That's not okay, no matter the reason. Emily, who had been silent until now, finally spoke up. I know this has been hard for everyone, she said quietly. But we have to find a way to move forward. We're family, and we need to support each other. I looked at her feeling a mixture of sympathy and frustration. Emily, I want to move forward too. But we can't just pretend this didn't happen. We have to address it and learn from it. The conversation continued for what felt like hours, going around in circles. My parents' resentment was palpable, but there were moments of clarity and understanding. It was clear that this was going to be a long and difficult process, but I was willing to put in the effort if they were. Eventually, we reached a tentative agreement to keep the lines of communication open and to work on rebuilding our relationship. It wasn't a perfect resolution, but it was a start. In the weeks that followed, I threw myself into my work and focused on my own well-being. The family drama was still there, but I was learning to navigate it with a sense of calm and resilience. I leaned on Mark, Sarah, and Aunt Karen for support, and their unwavering belief in me kept me grounded. One afternoon as I was working from home, I received a call from Detective Ramirez. I wanted to update you on the case, she said. Your parents have completed the first phase of their community service and are making progress on the repayment. Thank you for letting me know, I replied. I appreciate everything you've done. You're welcome, she said. If you have any questions or need further assistance, don't hesitate to reach out. After hanging up, I felt a sense of closure. The legal process was moving forward and my parents were being held accountable for their actions. It was a small victory, but it felt significant. As the weeks turned into months, the family dynamics continued to shift. There were moments of tension and conflict, but also moments of connection and understanding. My parents were slowly coming to terms with the consequences of their actions, and I was learning to set boundaries and stand up for myself. One evening, Emily called me unexpectedly. Can we meet for coffee? She asked, her voice hesitant. I want to talk. Of course, I replied, feeling a mix of curiosity and apprehension. We met at a quiet cafe, the same place where I had confronted my parents months ago. As we sat down with our drinks, Emily looked at me with a mixture of guilt and sadness. I've been doing a lot of thinking, she began, her voice soft. And I realize now that what mom and dad did was wrong. I'm sorry for not standing up for you sooner. Her words took me by surprise. Thank you, Emily. That means a lot. I just didn't know how to handle it, she continued. I felt caught in the middle and I didn't want to take sides. But I see now that I should have supported you. I understand, I said, reaching out to touch her hand. This has been hard for all of us, but it means a lot that you're here now. We talked for hours, sharing our feelings and experiences. It was a cathartic conversation, a chance to reconnect and start rebuilding our relationship. Emily's willingness to acknowledge the truth and take responsibility was a step towards healing. As I walked home that evening, I felt a sense of hope. The journey had been long and difficult, but there were signs of progress. My family was starting to understand the importance of trust and respect, and I was learning to navigate the complexities of our relationships with grace and resilience. The legal consequences had been a necessary wake-up call, a reminder that actions have repercussions but they also provided an opportunity for growth and understanding. My parents were slowly coming to terms with their actions, and Emily was finding her own path to reconciliation. One evening, as Mark and I sat on the couch, enjoying a quiet moment together, he turned to me with a thoughtful expression. You've come so far, he said, his voice filled with admiration. I'm proud of you. Thank you, I replied, feeling a lump form in my throat. It hasn't been easy, but I know it was the right thing. We'll get through this together, he said, taking my hand, one step at a time.
As I leaned into his embrace, I felt a sense of peace. The journey was far from over, but I knew I had the strength and support to face whatever challenges lay ahead. With the love of my friends and family, I could navigate the stormy seas of family drama and emerge stronger on the other side. The legal consequences had brought accountability and a chance for growth. The road ahead would be challenging, but I was ready to face it with courage and determination. The bonds of family were being tested, but they were also being strengthened, and that gave me hope for the future. The months following the court case were a period of intense reflection and healing. My parents were fulfilling their community service, and the repayment plan was in place, but the emotional scars ran deep. I had hoped that this experience would lead to a stronger, more honest relationship with them, but the reality was far more complicated. Despite their ongoing obligations, my parents' resentment toward me never fully dissipated. Each family gathering was a reminder of the chasm between us. They avoided talking about the situation directly, but their passive-aggressive comments and frosty demeanor spoke volumes. It became clear that they saw themselves as victims, unable to fully grasp the harm they had caused. One evening, after yet another tense dinner at my parents' house, I found myself sitting alone in my apartment, grappling with the weight of it all. The constant tension was draining, and I realized that I couldn't keep putting myself through this. I needed to make a decision for my own mental and emotional well-being. I called Mark, who was out of town on a business trip, and poured my heart out to him. I don't know how much more of this I can take, I said, my voice trembling. Every interaction with them feels like a battle. I can't keep living like this. You've done everything you can, Mark said gently. You stood up for yourself and held them accountable, but you also need to protect your own well-being. It's okay to take a step back if that's what you need. His words resonated deeply. I had fought hard to reclaim my life and set boundaries, but those boundaries were constantly being tested. It was time to prioritize my own peace and happiness. The next day I made the difficult decision to take a break from my parents. I needed time and space to heal without the constant strain of our fraught relationship. I wrote them a heartfelt letter, explaining my feelings and my need for distance. Dear Mom and Dad, I've been thinking a lot about everything that's happened over the past year. The court case, the tension, the pain, it's all taken a toll on me, and I need some time to heal. I love you both, and I hope that someday we can find a way to rebuild our relationship. But right now, I need to focus on my own well-being. This isn't goodbye forever, but I need a break from the constant stress and conflict. I hope you can understand and respect my decision. I truly believe that this time apart will help us all gain perspective and hopefully find a path to reconciliation in the future. Love. I sent the letter and immediately felt a sense of relief. It was a painful decision, but I knew it was the right one. For too long, I had put my parents' feelings above my own. It was time to prioritize my mental and emotional health. In the weeks that followed, I focused on myself. I threw myself into work, spent quality time with Mark and friends, and indulged in hobbies that brought me joy. The absence of constant family drama was a breath of fresh air, and I began to feel lighter, more at peace. Emily, who had been quietly supportive since our coffee shop meeting, reached out to me. I heard about your decision, she said. I'm sorry things have been so hard. Thank you, I replied, grateful for her understanding. I just need some space to heal. I get it, she said. I've been trying to talk to mom and dad to make them see your side. It's slow going, but I hope they'll come around eventually. Her words gave me hope, but I knew that change would take time. For now, I was content with the distance and the opportunity to focus on my own well-being. One sunny afternoon, as I was enjoying a peaceful walk in the park, my phone buzzed with a text message. It was from Aunt Karen. Proud of you for standing up for yourself. Always here for you. Let's have lunch soon. I smiled, feeling a surge of gratitude for the unwavering support of my Aunt Mark and my close friends. They had been my rock through this tumultuous journey, and their belief in me had kept me strong. Months turned into a year, and my life began to settle into a new normal. The distance from my parents allowed me to gain perspective and heal from the emotional wounds. I focused on building a life that brought me joy and fulfillment, free from the constant stress of family conflict. Then, one day, out of the blue... I received a letter from my parents. It was unexpected, and my hands trembled slightly as I opened it. We've had a lot of time to reflect on everything that's happened. At first, we were angry and hurt, but we've come to realize that our actions were wrong. 
We violated your trust, and for that, we are deeply sorry. We understand why you needed space, and we respect your decision. We hope that in time, we can start to rebuild our relationship. We love you and miss you. Love, Mom and Dad. Tears filled my eyes as I read their words. It was the first time they had truly acknowledged the harm they had caused. It was a step toward healing, a glimmer of hope for the future. I wasn't ready to jump back into a close relationship with them, but their letter was a sign that change was possible. It gave me hope that, with time and effort, we might find a way to rebuild our bond. As I folded the letter and placed it in a drawer, I felt a sense of peace. The journey had been long and difficult, but I had emerged stronger and more resilient. I had learned the importance of standing up for myself and setting boundaries, and I knew that I deserved happiness and respect. With the support of Mark, my friends, and my chosen family, I looked toward the future with hope and determination. The road ahead was still uncertain, but I was ready to face it one step at a time. To everyone who has followed this journey, thank you for your support and understanding. Have you ever faced a similar situation with your family? How did you navigate it, and what did you learn from the experience? I'd love to hear your thoughts and stories. Let's continue this conversation and support each other as we navigate the complexities of family and relationships.